Who won the most important Boston Marathon in many, many years this year? All right, that is true. There are few people in this world who are known by only one name. And one of them is the person who you're here to run with tonight. And we're going to start off by introducing that one name person. And he's actually going to take some questions for you, about five questions or so, some training questions. Then we're all going to go for a run. Before we do that, I'm going to have a couple ground rules that I'll give to you after we talk. But you've already named him. And he's right there. All right. So I'm going to hand over the microphone to the one name person. What is it? Ma'am! Thank you everybody, thanks Dave, Eddie, for having me here and Flea Feed on behalf of the Rock and Roll Marathon and uh, St. Louis. It's an honor to be here and to be able to you know, enjoy this moment and run with you guys and I hope I get to interact with all of you and uh, we are runners. We all, I always say run to win, that doesn't always mean getting first place, but getting the best out of each individual yourself and get the best that you can each time and every time. You know, we start together, how we do, how we get there, we all know it's challenging, but we get it done to that finish line and some of us might get there a little quicker than others, but... <laughs> You know, it's my job. I just try to make it as efficient as possible and effortless, but guess what? I am hurting too. Uh. Um, I'd like to say thank you again to the competitor group for allowing me to be here with you guys. It's such an honor as VP of running. I ran the course from 8 to 18 miles, so looks pretty good. I don't know if you can, hopefully you guys are ready, and it's fairly flat, and that are rolling hills, which is kind of good because it kind of allows you to change your mechanic, your cadence, and lean forward, and mechanics, and all that. So it's, it's nice, pretty well uh, smooth terrain, and uh, should be fun, you know. How many of you guys are around Boston? <laughs> well, I'm glad you didn't beat me. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't be standing here. <laughs> but I'm out. I believe 16 of that course here today, when I was running the course, it, it brought me back to Boston. It's very similar to downhill, making the right turn to the fireplace and then going up that hill. So if you're looking for the Boston qualifying time, it's a good course to do it. Have fun and uh, let's do a few questions and answers if you guys like. All right, raise your hand if you want to ask Meb a question and I'll reach out to you. Come on, somebody's got to have a question training. Yes, back there. <laughs> What's your name? Michelle. Michelle. I am Mr. Blister. I don't take pride in that, but I do get them and it takes a while and I've been getting them since 2001 on the track and then the biggest one was in 2007 Jacksonville 15k they in fact have to take the whole calcium out bottom of my foot and never since have been the same so Vaseline Vaseline and Vaseline <laughs> um, but you know what you just it's part of running but also look at your shoes if it's too small or too long uh, too big that can be a, a little bit variable there so but you know the journey takes itself. It's not just, you know, you have to, you will get some, but it's just how deep you don't want to get the big blood blister and get, you know, in fact, I got in those and I got in a foot infection and that uh, took me out for three weeks before the Olympic trials in 2012. I only have 48 days, but when you come back, you have to come back to the fitness that you were. Don't try to make, don't be in a rush. Marath life is about patience, marathons about patience, half marathon patience, and training is about patience. Don't be in a rush to get fit so quick and set yourself backward. In the uh, last mile of the Boston Marathon, you were frequently looking over your shoulder <laughs> at the, the second place runner. Can you tell me what was going through your head and, and why did you keep looking back at him? I did that? <laughs> <laughs> Just under times, right? <laughs> um, coaches always told you never look back, it's a sign of weakness. I don't think that's true. 
looking back and save you, uh, mile 23, first time I looked back probably, I mean I did a few times on a turn, but Boston is point to point, it's got a lot of turns to see the course or, or competitors, but uh, 23 something told me to look to the right and I saw bright orange color. After that what I was looking back for was, three things came to my mind, slow down, try to solve it on Boyson Street, or maintain the gap that I have, or extend the gap that, I ha that, I, that I'm dealing with. So the one, first one was pretty stupid because if you catch up to me, he's going to have the mental edge. Now it's equalized. But what I was looking back was, am I maintaining the gap or extending the gap? And it's not a sign of weakness coming and get me or whatnot. But in the last mile, you want to go for the win. The whole country's on your shoulder. I mean, I'm, you know, when the Boston uh, Red Sox won the World Championships, I know I'm St. Louis, but... <laughs> But when they did that, now imagine, but they did that when things are going so bad for the Boston Marathon, they put the trophy there. It was a necessary victory. And that goal for me says, they did that for the city, can I do that for the runners? So that's what I did, and, and I'm going to looking back on the last mile or last 300 meters or whatnot, it's like, I have enough. I know I have enough, but at the same time, you don't want no surprises. And I was able to do that by looking back, you just go, USA. USA and what was a horrific moment for all of us, for the runners on Boylston Street, you know, just blast over, bombs all over and wounded and then we lost four lives, but we can't get the other, can't get this life back, but there's many others that are dealing with that same situation mentally, physically, and for me to change that, I've been thinking about it for 365 days, what can I do positively to change that and it gave me I felt God gave me that opportunity and that moment day probably was more assuring that I was meant to be a runner. So and I'm glad to represent all of us to get that victory after 31 years to be the first one. Okay. Hold your thought. You have a question? What's your question? <laughs> I love the question. For you guys in here, it's like, where is your mom? <laughs> I'm thinking my daughters are saying the same thing. Where's daddy? <laughs> but moms are the most important thing. My dad always said, respect mom. They're the hard, hard working ever. And, uh, you know, my mom is dear. And she's in San Diego for your information. And uh, <laughs> she's hopefully be very proud of me. And then, uh, sorry. What's the next race you're uh, preparing for? My next race I'm getting ready for is New York City Marathon, two months away, November 2nd. Yeah. Coming along slowly but surely. So you wear compression socks. I've been wearing them more and more. So do you wear them all the time or how do you... you know, when Just for photo. No, when you, when, you, when you wear them, and you leave, how long do you leave them on after you run them? I love wearing my uh, CEP compression socks on my hard days. I mean, I wear them every day, unless I'm, I'm going to run and then change to something else. But usually, because as runners, we kind of linger and chat and, and whatnot, so I have them on. So I use them my hard days, my long runs, and even when I travel on a plane, I have them on. And uh, I really think it does help with blood circulation, and uh, I've been using them for at least 10 years. How long do you leave on after a run? After a run is usually until shower time. <laughs> Sometimes you do a second run and you know, you don't, you know, so, but as long as you're standing, especially if you guys are walking and standing in offices and things like that, you know, it's a good way to have a compression socks. So Bernie, it's that second run that's really, it's not the compression, <laughs> you know, it's because you have a second workout in. Yes. Um, what do you eat before a run? Well, that's a great question. What do I eat before a run? To this little boy guy here, if my mom made me the bread, I'll eat my mom's bread, but I can't have that all the time. So I have, usually have a toast or a bagel uh, with almond butter and uh, honey uh, or a banana. And depends if I'm going to go an hour or 45 minutes or 30 minutes, that varies sometimes. If it's 30 minutes, just have a banana and call it a day. If it's, I usually get up an hour or an hour and a half before stretch, do the foam roller and a little stretching and, you know, wake up the muscles because... I'm not, you know, young or chicken spring anymore, so <laughs> you gotta, you gotta keep up those muscles moving. Yes. What do you eat after a run? That's a great question. What do I eat after a run? Uh, believe it or not, I'm very 
conscious of what happened in my system because as soon as I hit 35, which was about you know, four or five years ago, I, my metabolism slowed down, but after a run I try to have my, after my hard run, the first thing that goes my body's generation you can, if you haven't figured out what that is, you should because I did an interval yesterday, I wasn't even sore today. So after a long run tempo and hard, hard run uh, intervals do that and then usually if it's an easy day I'd have a sandwich and then if it's hard hard day then it's all about protein and whether egg, scramble or um, at night I'll usually have beef, um, you know, be able to you know snack throughout the day, don't wait until you get hungry, don't wait until you get hydrate, dehydrated because when soon you feel that you're performance is dimension return and same thing with if you feel hungry just great out through the day I try to have four or five fruits unless I'm traveling four to five fruits a day to keep my energy up so no ice cream or anything else <laughs> you know I just recently went to the White House uh, for dinner I didn't even have the dessert <laughs> that's how serious I'm about my training unfortunately <laughs> You and then it will get you. Who do you look up to most as a professional athlete and why? What athlete do you look up to most and why? I mean, I looked up growing up to uh, Jim Ryan. Yeah. With hard work from, from Kansas. He says, snow, hot, hilly, cold, wind, you got to get it done. So work ethic always come from me. But Heide Gerberslasse has been the range of from anywhere from the 1500 meter to the marathon, similar to mine, but I went 1500 meter miler in high school, believe it or not and then the 10K, 5K in college, and then eventually to the marathon, and how he has handled himself as a professional, and off the, on the course and off the course has been, and that's, you know, and I like Pele because he got a, I love soccer passionately, but he also has the first one name. <laughs> Wait, I got a, what is it with somebody over here? Okay. Yeah, sorry. That is a great question. Um, I have my book here, Run to Overcome. If you haven't got a copy of it, uh, it would be great if you could support me. But I started running when I was seventh grade. The reason being, I just came here in 1987, 27 years ago, almost 28 the next month. And my parents gave out this opportunity to land in the state. And they said, if you work hard, you're going to get A or B. If you mess around with for running, you're going to get a DRF. Well, we wanted to work hard. and. Uh, the PE teacher said to like this class, he says, if you run hard, you're gonna A or B, or if not, you're gonna DNF. Well, I wanted to get that A. And you get a Roosevelt Junior High mock club teacher if you run six minutes and 15 seconds. It wasn't around the track four laps, it was around the campus, baseball field, softball field, field the middle of the campus, and I ran at five minutes and 20 seconds. I was 13 year old, and that's when my God-given talent was discovered. <laughs> Do I get cramps? If I don't do push-ups and sit-ups and I don't eat ahead of time, I do get cramps. And they're not fun. In fact, you know, the, 20, the fourth place finish at the Olympic Games from mile 8 to 21, I was dealing with cramps. So sometimes they just don't go away for a long, long time. So eat a lot of potassium bananas, okay? <laughs> What's your fastest time on the mile? On the mile run? My fastest mile time is, who can guess? I'm a marathoner, right? 402. You got it, 402. And I ran 342 for the 1500 meter 16 years ago. And that's a good four minute, but it makes it a lot easier when you go five minute pace. All right, one more question. We got it. Oh, yeah. one, one more. We've got a lot of got, we got a lot of beginning runners out here today. What's the one one tip that you can give them? The one tip that I want to tell is you made the right decision. I'm very proud of you for you being here. The question was what tips I would give to the beginners. And the first step, the hardest step you hear. From here, be patient. You know, you never, you're going to be doing half marathons, 5Ks, 10Ks, maybe eventually a marathon. But whenever you are struggling at that point, you're getting there, remember where you were today and how you gotten five weeks ago, three weeks ago. So be patient. That's what life is, that's what marathon is, that's what training is, and don't be in a rush to get fit and come back from injuries because they really didn't show up. I got one more question here and then we'll finish it up. Meb, what, what uh, career, whether it's a, the Olympic medal, the New York or Boston win, what accomplishment are you most proud of and why? Oh, 
Maybe, that's, maybe. That's, that's a super tough question. The question is which one I like, my silver medal, my New York, or Boston? Or something else that you had to overcome? You know, it's kind of telling me which daughter do you like better. <laughs> You know, each has its significance, and I'll tell you why. Or most proud of? The most proud of, obviously, of all is the Boston Marathon one. The reason being because of what happened the year before. I was there for four hours cheering people on, and, and I left five minutes before the explosion. And it could be one, it could be me, it could be my wife, it could be my daughter. And I made a personal commitment for the NSA, for Boston, and for the world. What I can I do positive to overcome that obstacle, that horrific moment of Wilson Street. So for me, it gave me great gratification to be able to go, you know, you can think it, do it, imagine it, but to actually do it all coming together, as you guys know, marathoners, everything has to click. And coincidentally, on the most important day of marathons, David said, it came for me. I felt proud to be able to be able to not just win it after 31 years, but on the most important day of marathoning, of Boston Marathon, just because you know, we needed an American to win it. We needed that healing process. And for me, I took that challenge every day. If I see Boston strong, or if I see a hat be, be strong hat and whatnot, there was constant reminders for me to say, am I on track to do it? Am I on track to do it? I want to do it. Just wanting to do is one thing, but to come and, and do it the way I did it, you know, you have to go six, seven miles. And in Athens, I couldn't go 5K left because I was, I was my fourth marathon. I was very fearful I'm going to hit the wall and not get a medal for our country. But to go with, you know, 15 miles in Boston to go left takes guts, takes commitment. It takes Boston strong, map strong. You got to be able, you know what? I'm going to go out to inspire people. If I get beat, I'm ready to live with the consequences. And that's what it get me on. And to be able to mile 18 and 19 and a half, people are saying, USA, USA, I can help it because I'm watching going USA, USA myself while I'm running. And that's why it's so special because there was so much emotion, so much deliberation of necess necessary victory and I felt proud that I was able to live to the standard. That was awesome. All right, so we're going to do a couple more things tonight. One is we were going to reveal the, uh, the marathon course, right, for uh, Rock and Roll St. Louis. Um, they're still printing the map uh, down at Kinko's. Uh, the course was approved at 3.30 today. So uh, we got, after Meb gave it the thumbs up, uh, after running, uh, uh, running it this morning. So it'll be here, the map, and we'll do that after our run. What we're going to do now is we're going to go out for a run. Anybody who wants to go with Meb, he was blasting about 5.30 when we were moving, not at the stoplights today. So I think we're going to go a little slower than that tonight. We're going to keep everybody together. The idea